Watch out, it's high noon somewhere. Hello everybody, I'm Evil Ted from the Evil Ted channel. I am taking over the DIY prop shop. Today I wanna make one of my favorite weapons from Overwatch, McCree's Peacekeeper. Before you build anything, you need references. And the great powerful thing about the internet is, typed in Overwatch McCree pistol and got some great images. The cool thing about this is, this is a three-dimensional, this is really nice, somebody broke this down, and even better, somebody went through the trouble and made a blueprint as well. But I realized it's a bit small, so I took it to the copy store and blew up the scale. Now people are asking me what percentage I blew this up at. I just used my hand as a reference. I just kept Xeroxing to the point where I felt it was big enough. So this is the scale. So this is what we got. This is our reference. Let's cut this out and start building. To build McCree's pistol, we need some material. So of course, I'm gonna use foam. I went to my local craft store and I picked up three sheets of five millimeter. I got one sheet of three and one sheet of one. So with these, I believe that we have plenty of foam to stack and get the thicknesses I need to make this gun. When you're cutting, take your time, no rush. Make sure you get this, because this is gonna be our pattern. We're gonna reproduce this right under the foam. And you can see these two lines on the blueprints. What that actually represents is the bevel. That means that when you cut this, we're gonna go back and take the tool and sand down the edges, because we wanna get the same bevels it has. And those are actually our bevel references. All right, here it is, all cut out and it's uh, detailed. I realized the diameter of this actually is the same as a three quarter inch PVC pipe. There's two grooves inside and there's notches. All right, now for this detail on the pipe, I think, what the heck, I have a pattern. Let's put it right on the pipe. The other trick is, we cut the sides, we have that edge right there. What I wanna do, take my X-Acto blade, I'm just gonna very carefully, and this is the part where you can cut yourself very easily. So take your time, then take a little bit of a tool, you grab this piece, and when you flex on it, look at that. See, breaks right out of there. and the chamber. Where the bolts go, we're gonna do that second. Now that we have our chamber, we're gonna decide on the diameter of it. So I have a circle template I'm using here, and of course you would think, just to go ahead and do the same diameter I have here in the circle, the same diameter of this chamber. And I realized though, to get this detail, I have to wrap foam around it. And I'm kind of pre-visualizing, I'll probably do one millimeter foam as a base and another millimeter foam for the detail recesses. So I have to go smaller. So I'm subtracting the diameter. So let's go ahead and cut this stuff and make our base out of five millimeter foam. The reason I'm doing five millimeter in this is because I want to be pretty sturdy and pretty thick and durable. So we're gonna trace on the inside because that's where the, the template ended. So we're gonna cut on the outside of our Sharpie line. And as you guys can see, all this roughness on the edge, we're gonna clean that up with this Dremel. I had both of them cleaned up now. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get our one millimeter foam. I'm gonna reproduce the width of this right here to make out of the one uh, millimeter foam we're going to wrap around twice onto this. Let's go ahead and glue these together. And while working with glue, be sure to put your gloves on. Now, I used to use barge out of a can and pour it into a metal can with a brush and it would just dry out of me. A glue pot, what makes it so universally great, it has a vapor lock, so once you close it, puts a lid on it, keeps the glue from vaporing out, also drying out on you, but you have a bristle brush that never dries out on you because once you're done, you put it right back in the jar. I'm just gonna do it on the edges. And this is where it really pays off to uh, dremel and smooth and you definitely could use a thicker piece of foam, a big chunk of foam, and push it through a bandsaw. And that was my plan, but I realized a lot of people out there don't have tools or band saws, so I want to try and make this a little bit easier, though. So there's certain tools you don't have access to, there's still different ways of doing it. The purpose for letting this stuff dry before you apply them together, it's contact adhesive, and thus it's in the name, contact. The glue works in a contact form. Both surfaces are semi-dry. If you let them dry too long, sometimes they don't stick as well, but you just kind of 
put on, wait a couple minutes, but once it dries, it makes a contact with itself. A little finessing, got it all glued, stuck together. Now we're gonna work on our second wrap, which I talked about earlier. This is the one millimeter foam, so made a template, and I basically traced this and did it six times. I went down on a piece of paper, I'm gonna cut these guys out, which is gonna add the additional chamber detail to this. Don't use a heat gun as a hair dryer, because it'll do damage. <laughs> Now we have our circle references. This is for me to take, a little trick I like to do. And what I've done with this sanding drum is I adjusted it to where the uh, sanding disc is very far away, so there's a bit of a recess in it, as you can see right there. And when you turn on high speed, I'm gonna press this into the foam. It's gonna make a little circular formation. So now we have our bolts in our chamber. Now we're going to dissect this and break up into pieces, which we go to our visual reference. And like here, you can see all the three-dimensional quality of it, like there's a piece that's obviously separate, you have a barrel, this piece in the bottom is definitely separate, the tab here, and you can see they kind of broken up here, and it's great, so we're gonna do that. Now that we have this, the desired thickness I want, I took some, my five millimeter foam, and I stacked it three times. So now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and trace this. All right, there it is, all traced and ready to go. Now granted, you can have your box cutter, your sharpener, get nice and sharp, and go ahead and cut this all out very carefully, and then go up to clean up the details with your Dremel. But uh, since I have a bandsaw and a miner saw right here, it's gonna go a lot quicker for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But if you don't have one, if you don't have a miner saw or a bandsaw, you can definitely do with both these tools. Because this is foam, we can just glue right back in, so I'm just gonna break the line, come in here and get all this out. All right, now the handle is done. I went ahead and glued back in the, the trigger guards, all glued back in, I took the trigger out, did a little finite clean sanding, and glued it back in, so that's done. Now all this detail stuff we're gonna do later. This we want to get the bulk of the work done first. All this nice tech stuff will be just other pieces and layers with a thinner foam. We'll build up to that. All right, there we go. Now I have our trenches, but I want to reproduce this curve into the foam. And the best way to do that is take the actual piece you're using and wrap it in sandpaper. Okay, now that I got the sandpaper, I went ahead, the back and forth, got the groove too deep to where I like it. This barrel will sit in now, just like I like it to, right there. And a little bit of groove on the top, the sandwich on top of the barrel, just like so. There, you can kind of see it coming together. As a matter of fact, we look at our references, look at this from the front, there's a bit of a bevel here, additional to the site. On the back of the receiver, the hammer is a little bit more detail, and this comes out and wraps around. And all this can happen, but the best thing is to do them separately. Sometimes when you're building something, you just want to hurry up and be done with it. Don't skip on the detail. Kind of adhesive, the great thing about it is, less is more. The thinner it is, the better it is. Now for our next step, 
plus you get Anything you do is metallic, the base should always be black. It's the best under base for anything you do metallic, silvers or golds. Just always make sure that your under, and your under base is black. It helps reflect better. Put a thin coat on, let it dry, do a second coat, and it ends up looking like this. It looks nice, but to get all these edges to make it look pop and make it look used, we're going to do a little weathering. So I went ahead and got me some uh, Mars Black and some uh, brown or burnt sienna here, and I mixed up again and made kind of a blackish brown. There it is, McCree's Peacekeeper. Now, of course, what I ended up doing was uh, I sealed it all with uh, a clear matte acrylic glaze, a little bit of matte finish to kind of knock down the shine a little bit. And the reason I do it too is all the weathering, all the acrylic paint, just kind of a protective coating. And this being foam, this is gonna survive many cons. So if you guys like what we did here, don't forget to leave comments below. And if you wanna see some other things, let us know what you'd like to see. I'm Evil Ted from the Evil Ted channel. You can catch me live on twitch.tv slash Evil Ted Smith. I stream live on Mondays and Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you like this, we have more things to come on the DIY Prop Shop. Thanks for watching. Click here to see other great builds and don't forget to subscribe.